I just completed a fuel system pressure test on this 380SL, and I'm really happy. I'm really happy for two reasons. Number one, this thing tests out beautifully. I mean, right on the money. I'm not going to go over the entire testing procedure in this video. That's covered in my long videos that come with my kit. But I can't believe how well this engine runs. And number two is I'm overjoyed how well my new version fuel pressure tester is working. Absolutely no leaks, easy to hook up. You know, it was about three years ago that I set out on the goal to try to build and provide a fuel system pressure tester like this for under $100 that didn't leak, that was accurate, and easy to understand and easy to hook up to the engine. And my goal with this tester as well is to get it to work on all the fuel injection systems right up to 2012 or 2013. I'm working on that right now. And what I want to do in this short video is just show you a few tips how you can hook this up and prevent problems. This is obviously something you can do yourself. I'm getting ready to do a fuel system pressure test. We're going to be hooking up the gauges to a couple fittings here and we want to make sure there's not a lot of pressure in the fuel distributor. You're going to have fuel spraying all over the place. One of the quick ways to determine if you do have pressure in the system is to push down on this plate right here. And you'll actually feel back pressure. You may even get a little squeaking noise. But this engine has sat overnight. I'm pushing down and I'm not getting any back pressure. So there's probably very little fuel pressure. But even then, I'm going to take a precaution when I disconnect this fitting right here. Notice I've taken a rag and I've shoved it up here. This is going to collect any type of fuel that's going to drip out of here. If you do push down on this plate and there's a lot of pressure, you're going to have to be really careful. Let's see now how much drippage we got. This engine has sat overnight. I'm going to loosen this fitting right here. Once you get this backed out, you can, <laughs> it's really tight because you have the, these two lines here. This is why I include the thin 14 millimeter wrench in my full kit. It's fairly easy to hook up to a K-Jetronic fuel system, but this right here is kind of a pain. You can do this without a thin wrench, but <laughs> I guarantee you, you're going to wish you had it when you get done. All right, look at that. See, almost no fuel. I don't even get any wetness on the rag. So that's your tip right there. You know, check this first before you remove this line on your cage electronic engine. So this is the second tip I want to share with you, and it's about this plastic bottle that I include in the kit. Do not use this tester without this plugged in. I'll tell you why. It's really easy if you're holding the gauge like this to accidentally hit the button, or if you drop it down, the button can go off. Now look what happens when you hit the button. I've already pressurized the system. Look at how much fuel that you're getting into this bottle. Look at that. That's how much fuel it took right now to depressurize the system. We had just shut it off a couple minutes ago. So this is a big safety issue here. Do not test without this bottle plugged into this line. Because if you accidentally push that valve, you're going to have fuel spraying all over a hot running engine. I just ran the engine and full system fuel pressure is spot on, couldn't be better. And the next thing you want to do is, of course, shut the engine off and then we're going to watch and see if this gauge leaks down. Now there's a number of reasons why you could be losing pressure rapidly. You know, you're going to lose it overnight. 
but people will always say, oh, check the check valves, oh, the accumulator, oh, this, that. You'll hear this all over the forums and the internet. But here is a way to figure out whether the problem is in the engine that's leaking pressure or it's back at the fuel delivery system. Now watch what happens when I break the line going to the coal start injector. A leaky coal start injector will cause your engine to run rich and it will also leak down immediately after you shut the engine off if you're doing a pressure test. Watch the gauge. I'm just going to break this. You have to be careful. You're in high pressure. I've got my safety goggles on. I'm going to use the rag and I'm just going to turn this a quarter of a turn. Okay, look at that. Then I'm going to wiggle the line. Look at what's happening to my pressure. Now the accumulator is putting it back up. So I'm going to open it back up a little bit more. This also lets me know the accumulator is working, see? All right, so we're going to just see what happens. Look what happens if you have a leaking coal start injector and the same thing could happen if you have leaking fuel injectors. Now if I tighten that up, you see that accumulator is holding pressure at the fuel delivery system. So that's a real good sign you have a strong accumulator as well. This 380SL has one of the sweetest running K-Jet Tronic engines I've ever been around. Go ahead and fire it up. Now remember it's cold, but look at that. Look at how smooth that's running. So if you want your engine to run like this, you know what you're going to have to do. So I hope those clips encouraged you and helped you realize you could do this yourself. And I cannot stress enough that you have to have one of these fuel system pressure testers if you're going to work on these old Mercedes fuel injected engines, particularly the K-Jet Tronic with the warm-up rigger. <laughs> That's number one. You'll be chasing your tail forever trying to figure out why your engine doesn't run right if you don't have one of these fuel system pressure testers. And I have full videos in my kit that walk you through the procedures on all these systems. Now, I want to take you to a 300E that's having a really hard time starting. And I'm going to share with you how easy it was to determine what the problem was using my fuel system pressure tester. Now let's take a look at a six cylinder KE Jetronic fuel injection system. This is KE because look at the black box. There's your EHA valve. And the connection points are a little different. You have one right here. You're going to connect right there. And the other one you're going to connect right down there. Notice where the valve is. The valve is now pointed towards the fuel distributor. It's a little bit different than the K-Jet So you have to remember that. The valve is on the side going to the top of the fuel distributor. And then the hose without the valve goes down here to the bottom. The pressure tester is hooked up properly. I've double checked all the fittings and now I'm going to start the fuel pump. I don't need to turn the engine on to get this test. I can just run the fuel pumps. And what we're looking for is full system pressure. What do we got? Okay, let's take a look. It should be between 75 to 80 pounds or 5.3 to 5.5 bars. Look at that. It couldn't be better. Now, if the pressure's low, that means our pumps are worn out or maybe the fuel filter is partially plugged. And I don't think that's the problem with this engine. Now I'm going to turn the pumps off and let's see what happens to the gauge. Okay, notice that. It drops right down. The manual states that this should stay at about 30 pounds for 30 minutes. So I'm going to look at my watch now. Look at that. It is 335. So we're going to come back at 405 and take a look or if it drops down sooner we'll come back and report in looks like we didn't have to wait 30 minutes i only had to wait five take a look at the gauge almost all the way down to zero now this gives us a clue why the owner has to crank so much in the morning to get this thing started or when the engine's cold there could be 
uh, two or three things that could be wrong causing the pressure to drop off so quickly. Why aren't you checking out things in the engine compartment? Well, let me explain. The owner told me he put new fuel pumps and a new fuel filter on. He did not change the accumulator. Obviously from the comments, a lot of people said it could be check valves and that's true. If these check valves, which are located right here, are not closing off, the fuel's gonna leak back and you're gonna have to crank, crank, crank to get it started. A number of you said it's probably accumulator. Well, okay, he didn't change the accumulator and it could be something in the engine compartment like leaking fuel injectors. But because of the history, and this is why when you troubleshoot, you want to think about the history, look at what's been done. And you don't always want to believe the owner, though. But you definitely want to look and look at paperwork and see what's been replaced. So at least for now, I'm going to eliminate the check valves. <laughs> but I'm not going to totally forget about them. And the reason is you can always get a bad new part, okay? So I'm going to focus on the accumulator. Now, a number of you have said, well, you can just take this hose off and see if it's leaking. Well, you have to be really careful, particularly on the 300E. Notice this hose is running horizontally. So you have fuel coming out of the tank, and fuel is already filling this hose. So if you cut the hose and say, oh, it's leaking fuel, and you assume that the accumulator is bad, you can be fooled. You want to make sure that the fluid is leaking out of the accumulator. It should not be leaking out of this side. There's a diaphragm in here, and once that ruptures, then the fuel can just leak right back down here. Here's the old accumulator. <laughs> and when we removed this, <laughs> it was absolutely full of fuel. We just tipped this up and it kept draining and draining and draining and draining. We were able to do this with probably less than a cup of fuel spill. Okay, now I think we're ready to test again. You know, it's going to take a while, maybe, maybe, maybe not to get it started, but we're back to zero here. And I'm going to have my friend get in the car and crank and let's see how this starts now. All right, let's call that 10 minutes, okay? Look, <laughs> unbelievable. It hasn't even lost one pound, maybe 0.25 PSI. That's all it's lost in 10 minutes. So I don't need to wait 30 minutes. You're gonna know within 10 minutes if there's a problem with pressure leaking back. So we've solved this problem. Okay, you got to see that? <laughs> Pretty easy, wasn't it? Now, I'm going to show you, this is January of 2025, I'm going to show you what I currently offer. I have two kits. One's a completely assembled deluxe kit with everything included, and the other is a builder's kit. That's the one for under $100 that you'll be able to put together yourself in 15 to 20 minutes. And if you need extras to go along with it, they'll be available separately as well. I want to explain now the difference between the two kits I offer for doing a fuel system pressure test. Now, keep in mind, this is February of 2025. So if you're watching this at a later date, you might wanna check out my website to see if there's been any changes or revisions. This is version three of my tester and I've worked very hard at coming up with a tester that is reliable, accurate, and doesn't leak. Now, doesn't leak is a big deal because I've had so many problems with a lot of these other testers you buy, they just leak fuel. And that's very dangerous. I can't believe they produce a product that leaks fuel when you're trying to do a fuel system pressure test sometimes goes up to 80 PSI. So over here on this side is my builder's kit. The reason I came up with a builder's kit was to try to provide something. To those of you who want to do your own tests, it's under $100. That was my goal right along. Over here is my deluxe complete kit, and it's more expensive because it includes a lot of extras. So if you get the builder's kit, it means you're gonna to have to do some building, but there's also some other significant key differences. This is a standard gauge. This is a liquid fill gauge. It will survive a lot more abuse, and in many cases, it can be more accurate. Now, what we do is we do test this 
We reject it if it's not within two PSI. We have a tester here in our shop that can compare pressure. We check it up around 80 PSI. And then of course we take this section on both of them and we test this whole section for leaks, including the clamping fittings here and the pressure release valve here. Now there's a couple things that are not included in either kit and those are right here. This is a special fitting that you will use on the M110, that's a six cylinder fuel injected K-Jetronic engine. This section right here is what is different. That is what you're going to have to build. You're going to end up building this. The lower section hose with valve for testing K and KE Jetronic fuel injection. And I know you're thinking, well, how am I going to put those clamps on and crimp them? Well, <laughs> so I have to include a tool. But here's everything you need right here. Everything here, here, and here will build you this right here. So I'm including this tool, which will allow you to crimp these clamps when you assemble this unit. You will get a basic video on how to assemble this. You'll get one other video which will explain some basic hookups. But if you want the complete training series, that'll be available separately. So even though this kit does not include everything, my goal was to get you started. I really want people that own these old fuel injected Mercedes to learn how to do fuel system pressure tests. Because without this knowledge and without this tool, sometimes you could be shooting in the dark trying to find why your engine is not starting or running properly.